Hello and welcome to Straight Dude Date Night, a show where two straight dudes go on a date and they review it. My name is David Stallings and I'm one of the straight dudes. And I am Ricky Rivera, the other straight dude. Today, we just went and saw the, at a fan event, we got an early showing of the new Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves movie. Uh, I feel like the majority of people have been going, huh, it could be really good or really bad. Mm -hmm. There's no in between on this. I, I, I'm pleasantly surprised with it. <laughs> yeah, I know that there was uh, a lot of drama before this movie came out. And yep. even even afterwards, I heard people saying, like, my only complaint is that... I heard this when you in the bathroom. They were like, my only complaint is that it's a Hasbro movie. Yes. And they were just so upset by that. The, <laughs> the people who are big... Because I, I saw this drama. This was like a month ago. Uh, the... Wizards of the Coast did not has not been very fun with their fans recently, and then so the ones that made the game, yep. or own the game at least. Right? Yep. And then the fans. One thing I know about the D and D community is that they're they're very they get very up in arms very quickly. So that was the big thing that I wasn't sure if this movie would succeed or not. So we'll see you this weekend. <laughs> we'll see. I mean, they had a whole issue. And that issue has since been resolved, so hopefully it does well. Yeah. They burned some bridges. I'm sure there's some people out there who are like, I'm still not seeing it, and fine. But as a movie by itself, even if you don't know the D&D stuff, this is a good movie. That's a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, this this is fun. Like, way more... I, I wasn't sure if this was going to be a movie that's like, this is only for people who know the lore, or if it was going to be like, we're dropping all the lore. And... They bridged it very well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought this was going to... I Honestly, before we watched this, I thought they were going to do a lot to cater to people who don't know what D&D is. Yeah. And I really feel like they did a good job meeting in the middle because there was like really... Like for for us who have played the game, yeah. we were like, she's cast Wild Shape like seven times. <laughs> yep. What the heck? Le she is beyond a god. That's a level she, 20 druid. Yeah, she's like Holy level, cow. She, yeah, I only know up to level 20. I'm pretty sure it's like four. You're maxed out. She's yeah. done it eight times in this one in like 10 minutes. Yep. <laughs> so for like us, you know, whatever. But, but for fans, like that's a lot of fun. And it's yeah. fun to bring people into the game and want to play it. And even with like, because the lore around D and D and around the Forgotten Realms, which is the world they world setting they were using, the fact they were able to really show the lore and all of the different factions in a cohesive way, I'm surprised at how how well put together it ended up being. That it never felt confusing. Right? Yeah. No. It it was pretty simple story. It's pretty fun. I think that will be put to the test as I try to do the synopsis. <laughs> Yeah, of, of this because there is a lot going on in this movie, uh, but I'm gonna try to put something together. Spoilers coming. Oh yeah, we're gonna spoil uh, every uh, always. A spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. A fun, a fun thing too. Before we start this, is we actually play D and D uh, a lot more frequently than we do now. But we, this is how we started as friends was to play D and D. Yep, and start a show doing D and D. So we have like I have like a. Or we have, yeah, a like YouTube ser web series that we had online for a little bit uh, that has our first campaign all documented and archived there, uh, and that yeah, that's yeah. that's really where Rick, you and I met <laughs> was yeah. through Colton bringing you along to it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So this is uh, this is definitely this one's been marked on the calendar for a while. We were nervous that it wasn't going to do well and we're happy that it has. So we've we been playing D and D together for three years, three now, years yeah. in the same campaign. <laughs> yeah. Oh, which for some of you thinking like that's a long time, but the people who have played are really thinking, dang, that's a long time. Yeah. <laughs> cause, cause like, I know like my brother-in-law has done like five, six campaigns in the time it's taken us to do one. <laughs> yep. It's, yeah, I, I I like to run very long campaigns. It's a ton of fun. It feels like a few. we've played a few campaigns in one. We just have kept the same characters for a long time. They're mainly like arcs in a way. Well, I'm sure... Dude, we're going to nerd out so much. I know. We're going to nerd out. That's, that was what I was trying happen. to get to. Is yeah, we're going we're gonna to nerd out during this. We're going to nerd so out so hard. If you're not into D&D, &D, 
this really is not going to be. We're going to review it. I I already know this recording. This episode will die. It will turn into nerding out. Yeah. So no. Bear, yeah. Yeah. Please I'm buckle hyped. up. I'm yeah. So hyped. We gave you a good synopsis. A good well, not good synopsis. We gave you a good review. If you don't want to nerd out. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. Still listen. You'll like it. You'll like it. It's fine. All right. So the synopsis of this movie uh, begins with the two most essential characters, Edgin, a bard, and Holga, a barbarian, uh, are both imprisoned in the frost world of Icewind Dale. They've been there for about two years. They're trying to find a way to come back to Neverwinter. Uh, they go th- go through Edgin's backstory, talking about that he used to be a basically a spy or a member of a faction called the Harpers, which was a very taxing role that during his time as a Harper, he helped put some people of another faction called the R- Red Wizards, managed to find some of them capture and put them in prison and his a big thing driving his backstory is that he messed up and stole from the red wizards which led red wizards to his home where they murdered his wife uh leaving him and his daughter alive without her and specifically she cannot be resurrected because she was murdered with a blade of the red wizards which is important and i'll get to that Holga and Edgin escape. They come down to Neverwinter in search of his daughter, Edgin's daughter, Kira, and the con man that they worked with, who apparently is looking after her, named Forge. Forge has become the lord of Neverwinter somehow, which is a big metropolis city. Uh, Has somehow become the lord due to nefarious means from uh, a red wizard (laughs) that... Uh, he has been working with Forge basically turns his daughter against against Edgin and they go through the process of they're going to have a heist to try to get his daughter back Edgin's daughter back from the Lord of Neverwinter and to also raid the vault where the uh, the Lord where Forge had stolen an item from Edgin called uh, the Tablet of Reawakening, which could Mm -hmm. resurrect someone. And so he wants to resurrect his wife. They assemble the team. They have to go... They go through the process of basically doing a dungeon crawl, (laughs) looking for a specific helmet that can disable all enchantments around them so that they could get into the vault that houses the tablet. Through a long series of events, managed to do so. Uh, Get this helmet... Oh, get into the vault. Turns out all of it was gone. And there was a plot going on by Forge to steal a bunch of money from the vault as a means to escape as the Red Wizard that he was uh, aligned with performs a spell that was used a century ago or several centuries ago that would turn all of the people of Neverwinter who have been assembled to a coliseum for games would turn all of them into undead people. And then our heroes stop that. The end. And the they end. become heroes of the realm. I think that covers That's pretty stuff. much it. Yeah. It's like, that's, that was a lot because I actually know what's going on. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's pretty simple. Like it, It's like we've said, if you've played D&D, you understand it, what's happening. It's pretty simple. If you don't play D&D, there's going to be some stuff that might be confusing. This is, it's pretty simple. It's more of a... It's a heist movie in general. It's a magical heist movie. That's what D&D is. Just magical yeah. heists. Even though you're doing it for good, you're like Robin Hoods of... But with like magic powers. It's awesome. Yeah. And that's that's basically the vibe they were trying to go for with this. And then exposing by the end of it, oh right, there is a person who we don't know their motive. Turns out they were the big bad this whole time. And their plan... I will say the planning of what the story turned out to be was actually pretty solid. It yeah. made sense very like why the Coliseum games mattered in it. Why is Forge stealing the money? Yeah. And then how is this person able to do this big undead spell again and why here? Like it it was very cohesive. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. It, you know, this movie 
gave me vibes of too. It kind of had, um, it felt almost like Guardians of the Galaxy esque, where it was just like really fun, mm-hmm. but like when it needed to be when it needed cool action sequences and stuff like that, you were like, oh, this is awesome. I think that's a really good way to put it, actually. Yeah, because I felt, that's how I felt watching Guardians of the Galaxy. It was like, that's a lot of fun, but like a lot of good action as well. These characters are having a great time. They're vibing, and then they know how to fight. Well, and that's, that's comparable because like, that's really how their setup works. I mean, yeah. they have Chris Pine and uh, Star-Lord are the same person. Yeah. Kind of useless. <laughs> they just devise the plan. Yeah, you got the muscles with the bard and uh, Drax. You got mm-hmm. you got uh, Gamora, the barbarian. <laughs> yeah, uh, probably more of the druid. Honestly, she kind of would carry the team. Yeah, the dru- oh man, and the then, druid was super fun. And then Rocket and the sorcerer, maybe I don't know, but there's a lot yeah, of yeah, that sounds right, chaotic, yeah. you know. Yeah, which. Bradley Cooper. Bro, Bradley Cooper is in this movie. He makes a great cameo. It's fantastic. And it, it's kind of like, that. Is that Bradley Cooper? Like, we literally looked at each other like, is that Bradley? Is that, is that him? But they make him a halfling, which is, I love the way they did halflings in this movie. It was so funny. <laughs> shrunk him down. They dude. just shrunk him like Elf. It, yeah. it reminded me of like Elf. When, it did. With, it looked exactly like, like Yeah, Papa with Elf. Elf. Yeah, Papa Elf. Oh yeah. my gosh. That's exactly <laughs> how they thing. did the halflings for this. Oh, it was so funny, dude. It was so funny. I think that was probably one of my favorite things about this. They really dove straight into... Like, the first character you see in this movie is a big... I think he was a he was supposed to be a half-orc, uh, and he was the, the prisoner that was being brought into Edgin and Holga's cell. Yeah. And they, right from the get-go, they're like, hey... It's a world with crazy creatures, and they just, they're all here, they live in civilization, and there's a man who's half half a dragon, there's a man who is also, he's a walking eagle. And Dude, so cool, they debuted so much, and yet, the craziest part about it is we've played D&D for three years, and I haven't seen... <laughs> Probably seventy five percent of the stuff they put in this movie. Oh yeah, they put in the they put in the tabaxi. They uh, they had the cat person. Yeah, who got brought in? You were like, what is that? I want to be that? that. Yeah, what is that? I'm gonna build a character. That's <laughs> I want to be the cat person. That's so cool. <laughs> Which was probably I will say that was probably the worst moment of like CGI in the movie. Oh yeah, <laughs> that one in particular looked really bad. That one looked bad, but like. I just immediately was like, dude, that'd be so fun to play. Yeah. Which is crazy because, like, even the Eric Coker looks sick. I've built an Eric Coker character before. And That's the big eagle person, for those who don't know. Which is hilarious. That his name is Jonathan. <laughs> yeah, he's named like every, Jonathan. Every Eric Coker you read about is like has some crazy name. <laughs> well, it was funny. That was good. It was funny for me because I run these games. And just for, like, one of the hardest things is like when I'm trying to build characters, I gotta give them a cool name. I gotta come up with something that makes X's sense. X's and V's and Z's. Yeah, it's gotta S's, be. And it's gotta be a name that R's. once I say it, the players will go, "What was that? Can you yeah. say it again?" Zara. Yep. Yeah. And for them to be like Katrina. His name's Jonathan. <laughs> His name is Jonathan. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I guess I could just do that. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Which Eric Coker is? It's even funnier because aren't they like the most. They're like one of the most like uh, really high wisdom, right? Yeah, they have. I think they have higher wisdom usually, and like but intelligence, like intelligence, right? Like they're pretty smart creatures. Yeah, the the ones that the the races in the game that are more like like the dragonborn or the tabaxi, the half orcs, Aarakocra, like that are more like almost tribal or most unique. I would say. The lore is always like they have the most wild names usually. Yeah, like yeah, I, yeah. you go to a Dragonborn generator and you're like, oh, this will be easy. I'll just I'll get the name from this, and it gives you ten of them, and you can't pronounce any of them. You can't. Yeah. There's no way I can say them. And yeah. I could pull them up right now, and it would be maybe I should. I'll start doing that. So, but I'm not gonna do that immediately. What is the? We have a Dragonborn in our game, right? In our campaign. Uh, yeah, Rivali or Rival, Rival, the ar- one of the archmages of the uh, so cool Golden Roar. Who's that was, like that was that was so cool for us <laughs> to yeah. see the Dragonborns and be like. First thing I thought of was like, yeah, this is the guy who you guys. Yeah, this is this like is, a good friend of yours in our game. 
Yeah, that was so fun. I loved it. And I guarantee you, everybody was having different reactions. Like, there's probably somebody who's fought a Dragonborn and is like, I hate those things. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's something I was thinking about on the drive over, is that this IP, and if it continues to, if they continue to make more, they ha- it's an IP that has so much source material, right? Yes. yes. So... It's going to be that similar... Like, for us, we're having a wild reaction to this movie because we know the source material, right? So there's so much Mm -hmm. that during the movie, we're like, oh, they're drawing from this. They're drawing from that. Oh, that's a cool way they interpreted that. So it's the same way that someone who's read the book before the movie or read the comics before the movie, they have the same reaction. The difference, though, with D&D is there's not only the lore, but everyone who's played the game can not only knows the lore, but can see Neverwinter and see these places and these people. And you're, you have a wildly different reaction about it based on what your time in the game has been. Yeah. And, and it might be hard to even see some of the visuals of it. Yeah. Like some of those things, like when they use magic missile, I never would have thought that that's how magic missile was used. Yeah. It's funny. Like there are probably people out there. Like we say we're nerding out. There are people who, go very specific with the components. And I don't think I ever want to play in a group like that because we kind of just don't, we kind of just skip some of that stuff. Yeah. But that was cool to watch it come out like the, the wrist and all that. Yeah. I always just imagine Colton was just pulling out his hands apart from each other and just a bunch of little missiles appeared and yep. just, just pushed them forward. Well, that's how I picture that spell too. It's, I usually, I think that's how I've described it usually in our game is that they're little motes of energy that's, come around the person which then you force outward um but i liked that they they like shot out of like his like a almost like his tablet like on his wrist they shot out of his wrist or he was doing spells that actually he took a moment to try and grab the component he would grab a wrong one uh the sorcerer he'd grab a wrong component cast a different spell on accident yeah Uh, like trying to there's a lot of things when you read the D and D rules and how the game works that you're like, I don't know how a person, if this were real, how they would do any of this. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's no. so much they're trying to manage. It, it was cool so well in the game, but it, yeah. it was cool to see these writers try to try to create a realistic way to show the mechanics of the D and D world. Yes. You know what I mean? I, I really hope that this movie does well and I hope it a lot of people end up wanting to play after this. Yeah. Because it is so much fun. Like as much fun as we had in the movie, I was like thinking about this on the drive over and I was like, Man, like that was so much fun that but it made me it didn't want me I didn't want more movies after I wanted to go play. It made me think the same thing. It was like, Man, I, I love so this much world more fun so much. playing this than yeah. watching it because it's like it's cool. It, it's so much cooler playing this campaign Mm -hmm. than it was watching the movie but i mean that was just like a two-hour glimpse into four or five hour sessions yeah i mean you get that's that's the thing too is there's there's gonna be something unique about this where like with with the marvel movies or movies based on a book it's cool to get a glimpse of an interpretation of stuff you already understand but with this and we've had this reaction i think with like avatar before where We watch that movie and our reaction at the end is, I want more. I wish I could have more. With this kind of, with D&D, with the D&D movie, you can have that reaction at the end and just go, all right, I'm going to text my group and we're going to, we have to play. Oh yeah, I was already working on a text. (laughs) I was already getting texted. We got to get our group together, man. I just don't know how to phrase to our bard that he that this movie's gonna be great for everybody in our group except for our bard because <laughs> it's gonna do only one thing and make him play more like a bard <laughs> yeah the bard i mean the bard they, they did really well i will say this they did really well from like the experiences i've talked to people about how they played characters and like who they've played with and mm-hmm. the way we've played every one of those characters is played really well to like how i've seen these characters be played in the game yeah like the bard it was just useless. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> like he just was, the, he was just the talker and he had the most story mm-hmm. and him playing the, 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 the loot. Yep. His DOS loot. Yeah. And yep. that's literally our bard, everything to a T. Yep. <laughs> it's the same thing. Well, what's funny is that I feel like 
I, I wonder if the writers and the director allowed the actors to make a decision on like what is their most preferred way of fighting or being useful in like if they were involved early on trying to figure out this movie because with because in the game bards are like they have I'm playing a bard in another campaign right now and I'm the strongest person in the team man That's no one can so touch crazy. me crazy and it, it's that's got to be I mean, our bard is very useful in situations, but like, it, like just, I watched it and I was like, oh my God, that's Brandon to a T. It, like, it was absolutely, because so Brandon rude. does, and there's a lot of people that, that play bards like this, where their main care is I want to be able to get anything I want just by talking. And I love, and he's, he's a thief too. Yeah. Which is exactly how our bard plays. I was like, dude, this is literally Brandon. Like, it really was. <laughs> And it was, oh my god! He does gosh. like the most random thing in a fight that somehow works, <laughs> like every time. And that's exactly what Chris Pine did. Yep. He would do the most random thing in a fight and it somehow worked. And yep. that's exactly what our bard does. That is the thing. They, this movie leaned in a lot to, like D&D &D is extremely chaotic when you're playing. You're, and I, I know, I've played a lot of D&D, &D, not as much as others, but I've run a lot of campaigns. And players are, when you tell them they can do whatever they want, and they take advantage of it people are crazy oh yeah and they i feel like with this movie they really tried to hone in on that of like yeah these they are still the player characters they're gonna be ridiculous <laughs> yeah i think this was fun and I, and I hope they make another one though but if they keep making these movies i hope they start catering more on the side of like this would be really funny for people who have played D D. yeah like i was telling colton this before we uh, had watched this movie Super fan Colton, who came on on the John Wick episodes, uh -huh. uh, rest his soul. Um, <laughs> he he, I told him how fun it would be if they had a character in this movie or an actor who just, when he die, he would come back as a new as character. a new character, but it would be the same actor. Yeah, I thought that'd be so funny, and that 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 would just be like such a good joke for like the. Uh, people who actually played D&D &D mm -hmm. and have had to make like three characters to yeah. the campaign, it would not land very well with people who haven't played. I think that would have to be like a later movie joke that they could could do that. Yeah. The, the joke that was definitely catering to people who've played the game though, that I feel like was actually a strategic uh, writer's move as well, was there was a running joke that almost everyone at some point would randomly go into their backstory and we'd have like a few minutes of seeing where this person came from yep. and their most epic or most terrible moment in their life. And that is who I am. That's if you've ever been in like a, a session zero of a D and D campaign, that's something that the dungeon master should bring up is like, all right, so you need to think about your backstory. Yep. <laughs> where, where did this yep. person come from? And you can make it whatever you want. But it's so crucial. The guy the who was the paladin, that one I was like, yeah, someone who someone was like, I want to be the hero. I want to be yeah. <laughs> the guy who shouldn't exist. And is like, yeah, okay, sure, here's your story. Yeah, these guys definitely played D&D, &D, the people who wrote it. Like, you could just feel oh, yeah. that the writers, like, they're probably taking from their stories, which mm -hmm. how fun, how cool Yeah, to be like, oh, I... I Camp, I did. I was the DM for this campaign, so I'm gonna use elements from it. Like, yeah. how cool would it be if you get to use stuff from our campaign? Oh my gosh! I've already I've written a a small script you uh, of for a short film idea so that uses the idea of uh, our big bad vol that I have in our campaign right now because I love that that that's the thing with this game, man. Is you get there's, there's so, so much, much creative creative options that come up out of nowhere, and you're like, "This is the greatest thing I've ever thought of," and it's all for this game, <laughs> dude. Like we seriously like, there's so much in there that I haven't seen in the game, and like we haven't even encountered a sorcerer. I mean, I know I know all about like the wild magic because that's the next character I want to play, mm -hmm. and I'm sure a lot of D and D. Uh, players have encountered or have played wild magic yeah. sorcerer because it is probably I, I don't know personally I haven't played it but after reading some, so many classes to me it seems like the most fun yeah it seems like just so chaotic it is the most chaotic I and you are the most chaotic person I know so you would oh, you would, would mesh very well with that. that the only problem is the character I play now is basically that <laughs> <laughs> Just in warlock form, which that will I will deduct points at the end of this because there is no warlocks in this movie, 
And that is a personal note that I need. Uh, I need warlocks. You need warlocks. There was a tiefling, which interesting that tiefling, huh? That was, I wonder, was that, she half human or was, Well, it, do you it, think they just cowered away from making her an actual tiefling? Well, it's interesting. So that was a, a source of debate. And like, there was some drama about it when the trailers first dropped about seeing her. Um, because the interpretation of tieflings is that they're half devils. Uh, and I guess you can do like they're, they're half devils and then half human or half elf or whatever. They can be of the other half can be whatever. Uh, but the typical way that tieflings have always been shown in the books is that they are like, they can be any color that you want through it too that they are very out they are a very outstanding individual uh they shine very bright which is part of the quote curse that they have they look very devilish yeah they they're half devil yeah and the only thing that they put on uh doric i think was her name which she was a dope character uh she was a druid the only thing they had on her was just uh these dark horns uh, coming out from her he- from her head, which you could kind of barely see because of her hair. I thought it was uh, uh, like a crown almost, or like like it, just something you wear on your head. Like I didn't think that that was her horns. Yeah, that could have been. It could have looked like a headdress. Like yeah. it was. It was not that noticeable. It looked like. It felt like they were almost scared of of, of really committing to. Let's have a tiefling in yeah, this. Yeah, because yeah, because even her tail, I didn't see until the very end of the movie. I guess there's there could have been fear about that cuz like I think it was around the 80s was when D&D was being seen as like this is this is propaganda for the devil yeah. and only the devil. Yeah. So in in trying to revive the property as a movie franchise if they were like yes, it is a world with full with full-blown devils in it. Yeah. Which it is. Which but, is probably why they stayed away from warlocks too. Yeah, but even with warlocks like I think you're you're drawing from your character who's connected to a devil, but there's there, concepts more like to other things. Yeah, I guess in a way it, it could be seen as like wild, but there's some warlock variants that they like. Our buddy Jared, his character when he came in, he's a warlock to an angel. Uh, it's like a celestial being, is where he gets his power from. It's, you could do whatever you want as a warlock. Yeah, I you think know what I, mean? I think just the the concept would be hard to write into a character that's not a villain. It a would have to be it would have to be the story is centered around the person. Yeah, warlocks are very hard. I feel like I've noticed that in our campaign that warlocks are very hard to write around. Yes. Because it's like no matter what the campaign is at the very end of the day, one of your characters is not fully committed to the group because they have some and a prior engagement because that's how they get their power. And that's kind of the that's that's one of the things where like they, they, for people who don't know, a warlock is essentially you get your yeah. power from a contract mm-hmm. that you make with another being. For me, it was a devil, but for others, it could be a religious thing, or it could be even, I don't know. There's, I think there was almost a time where I was, I could have switched over to a goddess mm-hmm. and just, just been her pawn essentially. Yeah, you can really, you can play with that as much as, as much as you want. There, it's like you are basically tethered to some kind of otherworldly higher being it can be a god it can be uh like an elder primordial beast it can be a devil whatever and that's where all your power draws from so it's hard to write that out because it's like if if whatever our campaign is doesn't align with my patron it's just Mm -hmm. like nope but here's powers here you go but on that point with the warlocks this is why i'm so i don't know if i've said it on the podcast i didn't care i'm very happy that i liked this movie i care a lot more about seeing this weekend if it's going to be a success yes the movie because if it is then there's not only adventure module books and campaigns that they can draw uh movie ideas from but with the warlock idea, there's novels that are focused around single individual characters that are in the Forgotten Realms, the world that this movie takes place in, that expand over several books. I read two books uh, of this that were I was most interested in called Brimstone Angels. It was the first two installments, and it was about a warlock. And the whole story focused around this woman trying to deal with... And I drew a, lo- a, a lot of inspiration for how to deal with your character 
uh, wow. from this book on how the devil in that book interacts with his uh, his warlock. And it's they can have movies that are just based on this one book. They can have a whole series oh, yeah. on just one character of a specific clash and oh. just go into it. Like, there's so much that this property can really go into. I'm so... And they can just I make their it. own stuff. They can just write up whatever they want. I mean, this movie proved that. They, yeah. Because they just drew on, like, here's the world, here's factions, and here's creatures that we can draw from and everything. Let's just play and make our own story. Because the story is completely unique, at least yeah. to my knowledge. It is not based on a novel or anything. It's just in the world of D&D. They just they could have written this movie as if they were writing a D&D campaign as the DM. They, they were like, okay, they, here's the script. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're definitely going to follow these characters, I think, if they make more, at least off the bat. Uh, yeah. But I would love to see other characters besides this because I don't think I want to see three more movies with the same set. set. I don't either. I, I want to see new characters involved. I, I mean, a bard is fun, but... <laughs> just the whole time I was like, dude, there's so many cooler things that can, even the bard can be doing. Yeah. Like I've seen Brandon use such cool spells and like they never had the bard use any spells, which the, I thought was crazy. He didn't even have a rapier. That that's like the bread and butter right there. I feel like that was them leaving the door open for a potential like character development for a future installment is that he learns how to do that later on learns how to cast magic or something. Yeah. But not having any magic was a little odd. Which yeah. I will say, bro, the getting to see the getting to see all the magic in the fights was so cool. That was fun. They made all the magic look really good and there were some horrifying moments too. Like there were some stuff that looked really like ooh, like when they reanimated the dead, I was like that's awesome. Yeah. And Talk it's, to dead. That was sick. Oh my gosh. Here's the thing. Okay, I think one of my favorite scenes was the the scene in the cemetery. Speak with dead on when the, they're yeah. casting "Speak with Dead" and they <laughs> they explain it too, which I respect them for taking a moment for to make sure everyone's on board of like this is how the spell works, and I don't know why it works, but this is how God made it. And it's like I I cast the incantation, the body will rise. Yep. And we have five. We get to ask it five questions that it knew in its life, and they. <laughs> <laughs> you and I were laughing the hardest during it because you and I were thinking the same thing, which was every single time we've used that spell in our campaign yeah. and had the same interaction with the corpses as the characters on screen yeah. were having. Just wasting questions. Oh, we got everything we need in the first two. All right. What is... <laughs> you know, we were just asked like random stuff. How Do you, do you have a family? Did you have a, did you have a wife? <laughs> Yeah. Are you a virgin? <laughs> yeah, were you a virgin? Yeah. Question you guys yeah. always ask. Yeah, we always ask. We, we gotta got, know. We got five questions. First question we gotta ask the person: Are they a virgin? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right off the bat, gotta know if they if they are. Hang up. <laughs> Drop the spell. Because even with this movie, they're like they get the info they need, and then they're like, okay, well we have to we have to end the spell. What what else do we ask him? Uh. What's your favorite book? Yeah, what's your favorite? Do you have any pets? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you want to hear a joke? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> and just dies down. Yep. That was... For us, I I feel like in general, with our review of this movie, like there's gonna we're going to have a, a bit of a bias because we are... There's so much we can relate to in the movie. We're the target crowd. Exactly. But in general, I do want to emphasize that I do think that this movie was good on its own. Yeah, I, I mean, I, there, I, I agree. I really do think that this movie was really good on its own. I think um, for people out there who are, you know, are, are still listening and have never played D&D, <laughs> thank you, first mm -hmm, off. Yeah. Uh, but second, you should definitely check this movie out because it's, it's definitely a really fun way to like kind of see and... If you haven't played, I'm sure you know somebody that has. Mm -hmm. You kind of get to like see an, a, a little bit into their world of like what they've experienced while playing. Especially with people our age as well. I've met so many people who, when it's come up now 
when it's come up that like, yeah, I play D&D and I, I've been playing for several years and I run campaigns, the usual reaction, if they're not already playing, first off, if, they, if they've already played, they're like, man, that's so cool. Tell me everything you've ever done. Yeah, what's if, your character? What happened? Yeah. How'd you die? If they have... If they haven't played, almost always the reaction has been, man, I wish I could play. I wish I had a group. I've heard it's so fun. Like, yeah. if that's you, go see this movie because the movie does a really good job of showcasing the how fun a, D, a game of D&D is. Yeah. And it can give you that glimpse and maybe that push into like, I have to, I have to find a group to play this with. I wish we had gotten to take our group to go see this. Yeah. I was thinking that like, man, that'd have been so fun to like go as a group. Like I wish we could have, man. Kiana, uh, another former guest on the show <laughs> from the, from the, uh, the, the, the Puss in Boots episode, mm-hmm. our Shrek expert. Mm-hmm. She's, she plays in our campaign and I think she would have loved the barbarian. Yeah. Cause she has the same exact play style. Yeah. Just, strike first and then ask questions later yep like the whole time i was like this is literally kiana's character it's a totally different build but it's the same person yeah just wants to just destroy everything Mm -hmm. Uh, you know what i mean like the bard was the exact same as our bard the sorcerer is probably more similar to to, i don't know that one we don't really have somebody like that but me i feel like i I, I feel like the sorcerer was very much like you (laughs) he was a lot more like me yeah Mm -hmm. i would have been way more aggressive though Yes. Than he was. I was definitely like he didn't have confidence. I have all the confidence. Yes, you in my do. Character. <laughs> I am <laughs> fully aware. <laughs> my character is very confident in himself. I am disappointed that the druid never used moonbeam. Shout out to Carissa. <laughs> I know moon. She. That's the other thing with the druid. She didn't even use her spells. She just did wild shapes. Well, that's the thing is that I I brought up briefly earlier is that every it felt like every character they chose what is my what is my main thing I like to use in battle. And for the druid, I've met players like this who are like, I don't care that I can cast spells as a druid. The thing I wanted as a druid is that I can turn into any animal I, I want. I can turn into animals. That was Chris's thing. Yeah, That's she, It's so she cool. Said, uh, she just wanted to be a bear. Like, uh, what is it? What is she? She's, uh, she's usually like a giant bear or something like that. Yes. I think it's, yeah, I think she originally turned into bears a lot. I'm trying to remember, that was a long time ago because now she turns into elementals, which are yeah, which insane. Is crazy that this lady has seven wild shapes but didn't become an <laughs> elemental. Well, it depends on the subclass. I'm gonna, ner- bro, I'm, I'm in such a geek mood right now. <laughs> that's fun. No, this is cool. I, I, I wish I, I, that's what I'm saying. Like, that's why I want more movies because I want to see more stuff. And it's the only reason I want my warlock in there because I'm just trying to see some Eldritch Blast. Yep, I think they can make so many good jokes of like, so is that all you do? <laughs> <laughs> like, that's just like. Well, yes, yeah, it's all I do. I have a very limited amount of magic <laughs> yeah, that I can hilarious. use at a given it's time. It's like, I can't, you don't understand. I have no spells. <laughs> I I'm can't. so powerful and Bro, I can do in nothing. That, in that one fight, I had to use both of my spell slots. You don't understand how tired I, I am. I am so powerful, but I can't use anything. <laughs> I'm so limited on my power. <laughs> but if you give me an hour, bro, it'll be it'll be back. Just but gotta I just, sit here for an hour. I need a quick power nap, and I'll be all good. Please don't get into another fight until then. It was it was a lot of fun seeing some of these, and like even they use shield a few times, and that like yeah, I feel like every campaign has had shield. Mm-hmm. So just knowing the common joke of just not nah, shield, throw shield out, yeah. get my shield out. Well, just was hilarious. So, and the sorcerer also tried to use uh, counter spell. Mm-hmm. Each time too, which he tried to use it early on, and it he failed. He failed the role basically, uh, and at the end he managed to get it. And that was just so cool, <laughs> dude. They they showed one crit in this whole movie, and it was throwing a freaking potato. That was the most wild, so dumb. But then I thought I I did not like that scene. I watched that, and I was like, this is so stupid. Very dumb. But then I thought. <sighs> We've probably done something way more, way more just dumb. And yeah. Like, like that was, that's something that we would have done. Yeah. We, we've, we've thrown things at people. <laughs> like that, that was a me moment. I've rolled nat 20s on the dumbest things. I, I feel like that's the moment where like in, in a game of D and D we've gotten to a very tense moment and you guys feel the players feel like they're at a loss and so they start asking the DM, what's around me? What do I have around me? Is there anything I can use? My spells, I don't, I'm almost out of spells. I'm not within range. What's around me? Well, there's, there's 
like it's a dock and they're loading stuff. There's like a thing of potatoes uh, near you as well. And you're like, guys, it's the only thing I can think of. And yep. you grab the potato and you throw it at the villain. Yeah. <laughs> and you crit. <laughs> Hilarious. There's so many times we've done stupid stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This movie definitely hits all the right bones for uh, D&D players. That one in that moment in particular, I feel like really is leaning into like this is silly. This is ridiculous. Yeah. But honest, if you've played the game, you know that you've done stupider things, and it's worked oh, yeah. out. I I really wish they had done more with the wild magic stuff, because I think wild magic is so chaotic for a movie, and I, I understand that they were probably just like easing into that. Yeah, just because it is kind of a lot to throw in there. Mm -hmm. But I don't necessarily think that the character. It's not that he's weak. It's just that wild magic just gives you a variant of like you could literally just become like a potted plant at any moment in time. <laughs> it's the most it's just ridiculous. Like, so like that that part of like when they wrote him out to be very like not confident in himself, that I think they wrote that out because he was wild magic. But I, I kinda like the idea that he is very powerful. <laughs> it's just at any moment it could just collapse. Yeah. Like you know what I mean? Like sorcerers are smart people. Mm-hmm. Well, you know what's fun is that the thing is they they couldn't introduce another wild magic sorcerer in another future installment and com and completely change the reason for why he has wild magic. Yeah. You know, that's one interpretation that they were like, hey, well, this character, we can have some development for that's him true. and justify he has wild magic because he's he doesn't he has low self-esteem. And true, that's yeah. where the wild magic comes from. And then. That's that is also the player talking to the DM like I want to I want to start with wild magic and maybe at some point I can cross this this threshold and have more control over the wild magic oh, as I become so stronger. True. Like that's that's an arc for a D&D &D game. Yeah. And they were like let's let's use that as a justification for this character. And he turned out to be a great character. That's true. That's a good point. I, yeah. It the wild magic stuff, though, like I would love to see more with that character. Like, if they make more movies and they keep anybody, I want the sorcerer to stay. Yeah, because he's so cool. I think the the most obvious moment of every single person, like, there's people in the world in D and D that have similar skill sets. They can use certain magic similarly, or have whatever. They have all these different abilities, but they're all unique. I think the biggest sign of that was when. The wizard and the sorcerer both used the spell Big B's hand. Oh, and both man. were wildly different interpretations of what that looked like. Yeah, dude. Big B's hand. Because the man. wizard, who was the main villain, it was like a fleshy, demonic, devilish hand that had come out of the earth that she was now controlling. And for the sorcerer, it was a hand that was made of the stonework of the architecture around. And so they were... Bad, these hands were battling each other, but and they're the same spell, wildly different interpretations. And that's the coolest thing about this game is oh, that yeah. every character is completely different. Well, it's definitely definitely a different interpretation than what I had. I thought Bigsby's hand was always literally just a big hand, <laughs> a big just like like my hand, but just mm -hmm. like fifty times X. You know? Yep. Yep. Fifty X on that hand. Like it, it was that was awesome. And the funny thing is too is like. We knew right away that was Bixby's hand. Yep. Because we've used it so much. Bro, Colton has used this. That's a signature spell of his. Shout out to Colton, his character, Andre. Just the... That's the thing. These For me, and for us, with these spells showing up, immediately I'm like, yes, I've seen this spell before. And the, one, the first instance that came up for me with Bixby's hand was uh, Colton's character restraining or grappling my big red dragon <laughs> as yep. it was trying to escape and nearly killing it before it, it was able to escape because he's got a big hand holding onto its freaking leg. Yeah. Oh, oh my gosh. That was awesome. It was so cool. And the Odaluk's resilient sphere, the big orb that trapped Helga and Edgin. Yeah. Uh, and they just started rolling away. I was like, yeah, I've used that spell f in a far different manner before. And I've used it for my bard. I <laughs> to escape a fight when we were like thousands of feet up in the air on like a skyship. I was like, you know what? I don't want to be a part of this anymore. And I jumped off the edge and cast that sphere on me, and then sent a a message to my 
uh, companions and was like, when the fight's over, let me know. And you can pick me up at the at the surface because <laughs> you can't take damage inside of it. That that's so fun. There's so many moments it's of this movie that if you've played the it. game, you're just able to. There's so much you're able to draw from and then get new ideas. Yeah, chill touch to cool down the tea. That was awesome. That was great. I've never used chill touch like that. I barely use that spell. Yeah, it's produce a rare one. Produce flame is just a candle. <laughs> yeah, produce flame. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dude, the big fat dragon fight, though. That was silly. That, that was, was... You know, the, and that's what I'm saying. Like, some of the elements of this movie were kind of silly. Like, that dragon was kind of silly. But, like, it was a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. It was just so, like... I don't know. Like, if I hadn't played d and I probably would have been a lot more critical on that. It'd yeah. Like, what the heck is that thing? Like, what am I looking at? Yeah. But, like, having played the game, it's just like... Yeah, that... I believe that. That's probably a real dragon. Yeah. Turns out it is. It's a real dragon from the, the books, but I feel like if you haven't if you have no idea what this movie is based on and you go into it, I feel like it'll have the same vibe that the menu had. Where the whole time we didn't we didn't know until like halfway through, is this movie serious or is this a comedy? And yeah. eventually you're like, oh, this is a comedy. <laughs> yeah, this is funny. This is meant to be funny. Mm. But, but yeah, but action's done really well. Like the fight scenes were done great. Yeah. It was, none of this movie looked, only the tabaxi thing, in my opinion, looked weird. <laughs> but everything else, for how much CGI was involved in it, it looked solid. They did a lot of good work in this movie. Yeah, I mean, it, it had a pretty big budget. I think we read 151 it was, million 151 which is 50 million more than 65 mm-hmm. and 65 sucked. Yeah. So it turns out that all you need is another 50 mil and it looks way better. Yeah, but seriously like like I mean, this is a pretty big budget but it, it, it's not a very big studio. Like I I think this is this studio's debut. The yeah. the 18 or whatever it was. I don't remember what, what It's this, it has it's a com- a company that it's, a it's basically Hasbro. Hasbro's. Uh, it's their new movie like company. film, yeah, mo- yeah, movie company. So for it being the first movie, I thought it was great CGI. I mean, it can only get better. First off, and second, mm-hmm. as a brand new studio, I mean, yeah, one fifty can go a long way, but like, you also got to understand that Marvel exists. Yeah. So a lot of the great artists out there have just been put to work on all these big budget, even bigger budget movies that yeah. have a way wider reach. So that 150 definitely was probably used to its fullest potential to make this yeah. best it could be. The crew, the people who put this together clearly took it very seriously yeah. and did as best as they could. Yeah, there was only a few things that looked kind of silly. Even, um, oh man, I think it was Bigsby's hand actually. It was the, the, the fleshy one. It kind of looked, if you looked at its wrist. It looked weird. It looked weird. It yeah. didn't look like it was fully finished. Mm-hmm. So like there were some moments in the CGI we could feel it was a little bit off, mm-hmm. but again it's it's you know new studios first movie, it's gonna be hard to gain that like we can get these big top tier CGI artists yeah. to come and do this, so I, I'm gonna go ahead and give it some grace there in that in that aspect of it. Yeah, this movie was definitely just them trying to get something solid out to prove that this can be a viable and profitable ip yeah and it's and it's not bad like it really isn't like it looks so dumb because the the amount of moments you'd realize that the cgi kind of looks off is outweighed by how well the rest of the movie looks yep it's shot really well like there's some really nice um backgrounds a lot Mm -hmm. of really cool elements almost feels kind of like lord of the rings in time yeah it does um so that was cool but yeah you could definitely tell the cgi it's got some work to improve but Mm -hmm. that's okay because we get more more movies. Yeah, absolutely. Oh man, I had so much. I had way more fun with this movie than I thought I was going to. I was excited about it, but just kind of nervous. Yeah, we we kind of talked about it that we were nervous that this is probably going to be the worst one that we've seen. Not not that it was going to be bad, but like it's in between a lot of big movies mm-hmm. coming out. Like John Wick just came out. I forget what's what's coming up, but I know it's another Mario. Movie. Oh is yeah, next. Mario. Yeah. So we're like, it's kind of in the midst of like big movies for us mm-hmm. and we're probably most excited for it, but we're nervous that it's going to be bad. And I'm yeah. happy that it, it wasn't. Mm-hmm. I thought it was a lot of fun. Uh, yeah. Even man, 
going back to what I was saying earlier with like how these characters are played, even the NPCs are hilarious, bro. The paladin. <laughs> well, just, just the fact you call him the NPC as well. It's very clear the paladin was not one of the ridiculous players. Dude, the the paladin, when he walked away and they're just like, and he's walking away. And, uh, oh, th- oh, he's just, wow, he really walks in a straight line really well. Oh, he's coming up to a rock. What's he going to do? He's going to go around it? Nope. He's just going to walk right Water. over the rock. <laughs> yep. And it's like that scene, I was thinking like, man, like if I hadn't played D&D, this would look really dumb, like really kind of forced. Mm-hmm. But again, another moment where it was just like, dude, that's so accurate. Yep. Like how many times have characters just walked off and we're like, where did they go? <laughs> and you're just like, they're gone. They, they left. <laughs> yeah, they like, walked out while like, you were like, talking. Like, all of I us said like, it. Yeah, all of us are like, no, but like, where'd they go? Can we follow them? And you're like. No, they're gone. <laughs> they you just disappear. You, it's more like, do you really want to? Yeah. We can do this. You can try to stalk yeah. them. It's just funny. It was just funny like to see him do that. We were th- I was thinking like, man, that's that's so accurate. Man. All right. Should we should we get the banana meter in here? Yeah, I mean let's let's go ahead and roll it in here. Uh we got it's the minion, not anymore, right? Wait, it's, it's is the, it the gun meter now? It's the gun meter. No, we can still call it the I banana meter. I think it's the meter. banana meter still. It's just John Wick bringing it in. Go ahead, wow. Mr. Wick. Go ahead. Bring it on in. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Th- thank you, sir. He's so tall. Wow. He is very tall. How did you get so... Yeah. Okay. Yeah, cool. All right. Sick. Yeah, I kind of miss the minions. It's kind of intimidating. It's a little more... I mean, it's kind of like the Avatar issue again. Yeah. Where it's just... The minions were kind of fun. They're wild, but they were kind of fun to have in the house. But yeah. when it's just like a big person, that that's a little more awkward for me. Yeah. He, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Oh, you yeah. agree. Thanks. Is he, is he like, does he hang out here when you're working? Is he like just kind of standing in the corner watching, protecting? He constantly, it, I do think it might be a protection thing or a curiosity if I'm his target, which is the most frightening part of it, where it's like, any corner I turn, he just happens to always be there. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Thank wow. you. Wow, we're going to need another hundred to take over because that's the whole rule, right? It's the hundreds yeah. take over the new. Yeah, I really. Who brings out the banana meter, but. Really hoping that I, get I another hundred. do want the minions back, but at least we have the banana meter. You, yeah. Yes. Thank you. You can. You okay. Can go. You could sit. You go ahead. Hang out in the closet. Oh, he's now he's yeah. punching your wall. Yeah. Okay. Just, All right. Can you close the? Do- you can close the. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Mister Wick. Yeah. I'm back. All right. <laughs> Good for you. Okay. We'll, we'll see you later. See ya. Be seeing you. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah, cool. Thank you. All right. Bro, it's it's weird. That was weird. I, I kind of miss. I kind of miss the minions. We got yeah. Get, we got All right. We'll fig- we'll figure it out. Maybe we can get them I don't back. I want to fire him. I know what happens. We know what happens if you mess him up. Maybe we can find a different job for him. Yeah, true. All right. Banana meters plugged in, it's turned on. What you thinking? All right. So again, we'll reiterate very fun movie. Uh the acting is really good. The, uh I think we're gonna differ on this. The girl who plays the druid felt very much like they were just trying to make like a Scarlett Johansson character out of her. Mm-hmm. Which was probably the reason why I thought I felt kind of marvelish to this movie. Yeah. Um, I, th- there was just some, sometimes when she was talking, it just felt really weird. It felt like she was just like reading lines. I don't know. That was just weird, but that was just personal thing. Uh, but I mean, overall the acting is really good in this. Uh, the characters are really fun. The music surprisingly was really good. Yeah. It was really well, um, scored to what was happening. We you know we made the complaint some CGI was a little okay a little iffy kind of looks a little off but yeah again you know it has its its faults there uh, I do want to see more that they did leave me wanting to see more and I hope this movie is successful yeah um th- there's so much more they can do and there's so it's, it's it's hard to be like man like they could have done this or this and this and it's like dude that's just D and D there's mm-hmm. just a million options you could play it so it's just you know, there's so much. There's so much room for everything. It's not improvement. It's just room for more. Yeah. Um, I've been trying to think of a good score to land this at because this this movie didn't. It's not like the best movie I've seen in a long time, but it's it's really good to see a good D and D movie. Yeah. I think I'm gonna land it at like a 75. I feel like that's the that's where I like it personally. I think that that's a good movie. Mm-hmm. A lot of fun, and I hope it produces more. Uh. 
it made me wanting more and I did deduct points because there's no warlock personally. <laughs> okay. And, and, and also kind of too, with the tiefling thing, I really wish they had just committed to a tiefling. I understand why it's just, it's a little scary to put a whole half devil in there. I mean, I, I, that's more of conjecture. I, I can't, I don't know if that's truly why they did that or not, but it does. There may have been story that we missed. Yeah, maybe. I just, I, 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 uh, personally, I think tieflings are really interesting characters. They are my they're my favorite as well. The lore about them is yeah. is insane. They're so cool. I mean, that's even with that. I know I am a tiefling in our game, and the people <laughs> in our campaign are like, "Well, of course he thinks that." But it's like I'm a tiefling in the other. Yeah, game, but like yeah. I really do think tieflings genuinely are the most fun yeah. like races in in this game. Mm-hmm. Like, humans are just so basic, and you know, all these other things. But tieflings just naturally have that like charisma like if you want a very charismatic character yeah it's always you're gonna find that in a tiefling no matter what no matter what they are even a druid who's a very humble kind of class Mm -hmm. i still feel like as a tiefling i wanted more like intimidation yeah i do think that that may have come that i i think the only thing i can theorize about that is them being scared of putting people off yeah, with having a full blown devil in yeah, the movie. We, yeah, we said earlier that like you know there's different interpretations of a lot of things, but a tiefling is pretty much a tiefling. I don't think I've heard of. I don't know. Maybe you would know more definitely if there's a I tiefling mean, subclass. It's that makes like you, you human. can do whatever you want with it. So it's not. It's not. It's not out of this world to be like, yeah, I, my character basically just looks like a human, but with the horns. And you're like, cool, that's fine. But it, and you can justify it, and it's whatever. It and you can change it however you want for your game. Me personally, I I I'm like, yeah. If I'm gonna be a tiefling, I'm gonna be a big, uh, shining red one, and I want everyone to look at me, and I want it to be a problem. And yeah. <laughs> and it's probably a budget thing. That might they, have been it too. Yeah, they might not have just wanted to. I mean. They would have CGI'd it. Well, there's a reason that in every big town scene, it was only uh, like humans or elves, and maybe like one person was a big monstrous creature because that takes work. Yeah, I, I do wish they had used more costumes mm-hmm. um, because I, I mean that's just really common in movies nowadays where they just would rather CGI things than. Than just make a costume for it. Yeah. But I would have loved to have seen, like, a costume would have been sick. Like, they could have easily... I mean, there's there's probably fan costumes of tieflings that look better than what they could have CGI'd. Oh, bro, if you go look up cosplay for D&D stuff... One of my favorite things I've seen is when people have cosplayed their own D&D character. It is so freaking cool. Dude, There, I guarantee you there's a group of people out there... Who would be willing to help do cosplay for this movie to create characters on the side mm-hmm. for very cheap? Yeah. I, I mean, honestly, if they were like, hey, can we dress you up as a tiefling? You just play a tiefling that's like an extra. I probably would do it for free because it would just be so fun to do. Yeah, I think the pro- I think the problem, though, is like how much time it gets dedicated to that of like if you make a character that's a main character be... It, it is a costume and we have to put on all of that every day then it becomes that that actor or actress has to show up on set like three hours before everyone else then be in that all day long yeah. and depending on the size of the role they might that process may happen for a month or two at a time you know what i mean dude dave batista did it yeah, so can, people have people have done it. So can fake Scarlett Johansson. I mean, you know, yeah. If you want to make it in this industry, you gotta give <laughs> and take. I mean, me, I would. I, I was thinking about it during it. I'm like, would I be okay if I was cast as like a a dragonborn, a big dragon man, and no one could actually see that that's David Stallings there? I, and I was like, hell yeah, I would. Yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> it would be yeah, so fun. Sure. I would do this for every sure. day. That's what I'm saying. Like, there are so many people. Like this D and D community is a very friendly, like with each other, very passionate about what they, they do. People way, way more into this than us (laughs) would be willing to do this for free. Probably bro. Straight up. One of the reasons, I mean, I want more of the D and D movies in general because I do think they're going to be a ton of fun. A part of me as a, as a man pursuing an acting career is like, 
this is perfect timing. If I continue pursuing this and then this starts happening, I could be in one of these movies. That's true. I want I don't want to be in a Marvel movie. I want to be a, a supporting or lead character in a in a D&D movie. That's what I want, bro. That'd be awesome. That would be hype. <laughs> Yeah, this this is a fun movie. I'm gonna change my rating actually too from 75 to 80. That feels okay. more accurate. It's an 80. It's an 80 for me. Okay. It's a B. It's a solid B. <laughs> all right. All right. Not solid B, but B. <laughs> all right. For me, I mean, we've been giving a lot of praise to it. There's, again, there's some stuff with the CGI that's weird. Some of the acting is kind of is kind of meh. Uh, and then some of the jokes, I feel like they're not going to land as well for other people. I was laughing at everything because I'm a huge nerd with D and D. I, and so I, everything they were doing that they were referencing, Ricky's looking at my vast collection of books right now, like that are all D and D. Yeah. It's, it's, I got a bunch of minis and everything. Like I love this. So for me, I had a huge smile on my face the whole time. And I also think that they did a good job of giving into one of the biggest assets of the IP, which is that they have an entire world at their disposal. There's no reason to limit themselves to one area. Rather, they did a good job of going from place to place. We got to see Neverwinter. We got to see the Forest of Evermore. We got to see Icewind Dale. We got to see parts of the Underdark. Like There was a ton of stuff that we got to see. That made it feel like Lord of the Rings in a way, where it was a big journey. We got to go on through the world. And then if you know the map, you know that that was the tip of the iceberg. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's barely anything for the entire continent that they were on. Uh, so for me, I'm going to give this two separate ratings. Because one of them is me is my biased one of, I'm, I'm a nerd and I love this. And... I could watch this over and over again because it was that much fun for me. So I'm going to give it an 85 for that one. In general, I, do, I think that the majority of people, they're going to have fun with it. But there's if like you are not a big D&D head, it's going to just be like, eh, it was good. It was a good movie. Nothing big from it. It didn't make me feel that much. It was cool. It looked cool. And then you're going to remember parts of the CGI and you're going to be like, that was weird. It's kind of a weird movie. So I think the the average consumer that this review is a 70. Yeah. That's what I think this movie is. See, we're floating in the same area. You and yeah. Isn't it a 75 overall? Yeah. I like that. Because I... It's a good home. For me, if... If any of our friends are like, hey, I do want to go see that movie, I'll be like, yeah, cool. I'm coming with you. We're going to go see it. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'd rewatch this again for sure. But you're right. I mean, as a movie for like somebody who's not into D&D, like if I had to, if my mom went in and watched it, she'd probably be like, yeah, it's all right. Yeah, it was good. It was good. Like it was cool action. It was cool to see the, the owl thing, bear, whatever the heck that was. Yeah. Uh, but there may be some confusion on other parts on how s things work. I feel like some people may be like, there's a lot going on. I don't fully get what's happening. Uh, and so there's some beats that I think might be missed because of that. Yeah. Because there is a lot. I do think there's a lot of jokes and a lot of story that's based, that's kind of focused more on the audience that does know D&D. &D. But that is the demographic they're trying to appeal to. It would have been cool. I mean, I think did we? I don't know. We probably mentioned it already. I think it would have been cool to have title cards, just to tell you like what the class is. Yeah, it's kind of nerdy for those who aren't into it. But I think like thinking more about it, that probably would have helped out though with some people. Yeah, because I mean, who doesn't know what a wizard is? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Or to just be like source, like like uh, you know, whatever. Sor Simon sorcerer, what subclass wild magic. Mm hmm. And then for that person, they get to go home. Like, even if you don't know what that is in the movie, you could go home and be like, sorcerer, wild magic. What is that? Oh, okay. This makes so much more sense now yeah. what he is. Rather than like, we had to, you had to, if you weren't, if you didn't really know D&D, &D, you wouldn't even have known that he was a wild class. Because he mentioned it at some point. It got mentioned early on, but it's like very quick. Yeah. You would have just skipped over that and been like, well, yeah, that was kind of wild, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like you wouldn't it's kind of radical was. in a way. Yeah, like I, I still don't know what subclass the druid was. Like I, I don't know what she was. I, I don't know either. I feel like she probably was like circle of circle of the moon, like uh, 
Carissa's character is. Yeah. Uh, so like that's just because the wild shape focus circle of the moon has a big focus on that. I, I think maybe they didn't put the necessary subclasses in each of them, maybe to kind of protect themselves from a slip up of super fans of like, Oh, well she's circle of the moon, but she, she that, can't do this. She can't, she's not allowed to turn into rat. That's <laughs> not allowed in that subclass. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, so maybe it was a limiting thing. Maybe, I don't know. Interest, but I, I definitely think that would have been really cool to at least put a little, what their races, their classes, and their subclass. Like, that yeah. would have been so fun. Well, I think with the druid in particular, the whole scene showing her escaping the city and transforming 50 times into different animals was really showing, like, hey, we're drawing lore from the game. We're not going to follow the rules exactly. At least not to start. Maybe later yeah. on they will. For right now, with this character, let's let's just pretend that the rules say she can do this. Which makes more sense, because sometimes I think about it and I'm like, man, these rules kind of suck. Sometimes the rules are bad. Yeah, you're like, oh, like, like, sometimes I think, like, why can't I just negotiate for more spells with my patron? Yeah. That's just against the rules. It's just how it's written. It's more like, it's not necessarily against the rules. It's more of like... Okay, Ricky, I, uh, we can do that, but thinking about it logistically, David has to go and figure out what that <laughs> looks like. It's helpful if we fi- if we stick with the rules in some way. We can do it. We can, but it's going to be a whole lot. But it's a whole bit I have to do outside yeah. of the game. Yeah, so it's like, it's cool. It's cool. I like the way they did it. Uh, I think it's a good, good place for this to live. I think that's where a lot of people will probably have it at. It's about. a good movie. If yeah, people want movie. to see a good movie this weekend, D and D, or I guess it's coming out on Monday. It good movie right now. D and D. It's a good one. Go take your kid to see it. It's fun. Then they'll play it and they'll be creative. More people should play D and D. Forgot to do my IMD review, but that's fine. We don't okay. have to have it It'll every episode. Back. It'll come back. Hot cakes does, does not have to be in cakes, every episode. We watch this before the movie's even out, so there's not many reviews out yeah, there. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. There's it, like ten reviews. It can come up naturally. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. hot cakes. We'll save that for next week. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, Mr. Wick, uh, plug that in as a seventy-five, and uh, you can get that thing out of here. And yeah, and, and there he goes, and just oh, oh, but he oh. just got hit by a car. All right, well, cool. Wow. Oh, he just got yeah, right yeah, back yeah. up. He's, uh, he's right back up, and he shot the car. He's now shooting the car. You, we were gonna <laughs> censor those out. And wow, he, he's, he just yeah. All right, yeah, he's gone. Be seeing you. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh huh. Take care. We gotta get. That. I don't know why he went outside. He's gonna. He's staying here. He's gonna come right back in. I got some ideas on how to get rid of that guy. Okay. We'll all right. I'm ex- that off. We'll yeah. talk about. We'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. We'll I'm talk about. Thinking we involve a dog though. Okay. All right. Mm-hmm. We'll t- we'll figure this out. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for listening to Straight Dude Date Night. We do hope you enjoy. Uh, as always, we have a bunch of social media stuff. Just look up Straight Dude Date Night. Uh, Big help would be review the podcast if you haven't already or tell a friend uh, about us. Uh, we're just very grateful for all the people who've been listening and have been enjoying our our time together. And yeah. Thanks uh, for nerding out. Thanks for nerding out. Sorry. Like, I mean, we did review this more than I thought we would, but also I, I hope uh, one takeaway from this is if you haven't considered it, try to try to play D&D. It's a good time. It's, yeah. Big comment to uh, DM DM us on Instagram. And we'll tell you all about. It. Yep, you may have heard that it's a big commitment, and it can be. Yeah, but it is. <laughs> there's also ways around it. I'm just making it a nice one night stand. Yep, super so. great. So with that, bro, Ricky, I've been playing this game for like I'm not a huge. I have not been playing it as long as everyone else. I do think I have my first time playing this. I think was 2013. Though, so it's been ten years since my first game of D and D, so I'm very grateful I've been able to have a friendship with you because of this game, and yes. then also have a night of seeing what I hope is the beginning of a fantastic franchise uh, with you. This is a great honor for me. I'm happy we got to go on fan night. It just felt so special because fan every, night. Everybody in that room was there because they wanted D and D. The the most packed theater we've had since we've started this podcast. Dude, we got posters. We got maps. We we got the. We didn't even talk about the D twenty. Everyone should be bucket. jealous of the merch that we have now. Oh, it's so cool. Maybe we'll post on Instagram. Thank you, AMC. Maybe. Thank you, AMC. Thank you, Wizards of the Coast. Thank you, Hasbro. I loved this movie.
All right. Thank you. Bye bye. Have a good bye. week. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.